right now you might be feeling. I don't know the first thing about fitting contact lenses. We can fix that. With a few simple tips and tricks, we'll have you fitting your patients in contact lenses like a pro. I'm Dr. Fromstein. let's get started. The first thing you want to ask is whether or not your patient has worn lenses before. If yes, it's a slam dunk. Just match them to the right lens. But if not, ask them if they're interested. There are so many potentially successful wearers out there who aren't in contacts because no one has ever asked them and they think they're not a candidate. Some reasons for prescribing lenses that are often overlooked include sports, lots of time outdoors, special events, shift workers, presbyopes. There are lenses to suit just about every prescription, so don't write off the astigmat or presbyope. Soft spheres are easy, but if you fit the patient who thought they couldn't be fit, you'll have loyalty for life. You should make a recommendation based on the examination results and your assessment of the patient. Don't just present all the options and ask, which would you like to go with? Your recommendation should include daily versus extended wear, daily disposable versus reusable, and silicone hydrogel versus hydrogel. Remember, you are the doctor. Tell them what lens you think they'd be the best candidate for. This is your area of expertise, and they'll expect you to know what you're talking about. My top five questions to ask a previous contact lens wearer are, one, when did you last wear your lenses? Two, what type of lenses do you wear? Three, how often do you sleep in your lenses? Four, how often do you replace your lenses? And five, if they stopped wearing their lenses, why did they stop? If a patient was having difficulty with their previous lenses, don't fit them in the same one. Troubleshoot and switch them to a new lens modality or design. More on that later. Be sure to take note of any medications, both topical and systemic, that may affect the ocular surface. And pay close attention to the four A's. Anticholinergics, antihistamines, antipsychotics, and acne medications, all of which can cause dry eye. Personality and cleanliness should also be taken into account. Make sure that the patient appears able to handle their contact lenses. Generally, good hygiene is a must. Take a look at their fingernails and what might be lurking underneath. Also, establish at that initial visit the commitment and follow-up care that will be required moving forward. Ask the patient about what they do for a living, but also about what they do with their free time. These often have very different visual requirements. Listen closely to their answers so you can address any concerns with your new lens of choice. This doesn't mean that you can't fit the patient, just that you should discuss expectations and solutions in advance so there are no surprises. Patients hate surprises, unless they're good ones. Let's talk about some reasons to not fit a patient in contact lenses. If the patient has poor hygiene, do not fit them in contact lenses. If they have potential for or a history of abusing their contact lenses, do not fit them in new contact lenses. If they can't follow up with you or another doctor, do not fit them in contact lenses. If they have external disease or infection, do not fit them with contact lenses. If the patient has an occupation that will expose them to debris, particles, or fumes that can concentrate in the material of the soft contact lens, please do not fit them in contact lenses. The issue of price will definitely come up during your contact lens fit. Fit fees, follow-up fees, and the relative cost of lenses should all be discussed at your first visit. This becomes really important when talking about daily disposable lenses, but here's the kicker. Once you factor in the cost of solutions, artificial tears, and lens cases over the course of a whole year, the cost of a daily disposable and the cost of a reusable lens become a lot more similar. The point being, recommend whatever lens suits your patient best. There are tons of contact lens options and replacement schedules for your patients. There are daily lenses, there are two-week lenses, there are monthly lenses and beyond, and each have their own unique set of pros and cons. When discussing single-use versus reusable lenses, look at the patient personality and hygiene. Do they seem like they would be able to properly clean and care for reusable lenses? If not, they should be in a daily disposable. Children and adolescents, unless wise beyond their years, should definitely be in a daily disposable, if at all possible. The same goes for most college students. Ultimately, it's the healthiest option for someone who can't really put in the time to take care of their lenses. The only downside to these daily disposable lenses is, as previously discussed, the upfront cost and the fact that they're not available in quite as many parameters as their monthly counterparts. Two-week lenses have historically been the number one market in the U.S., and they offer a very good compromise between convenience and affordability. Because of this, there are tons of options out there for your patients in terms of high cylinder, high refractive error, and other parameters. The biggest downside to these lenses is that patients tend to overwear them or forget to replace them every two weeks. It's up to you to figure out who's doing this and prescribe for how they're actually wearing their lens. This might mean switching them to a monthly modality. 
Monthly lenses have really similar benefits to their two-week counterparts in that there's tons of options to maximize vision and comfort for your patients. They're also really oxygen permeable and many of them are safe for overnight wear. When discussing daily wear versus extended wear, that is, sleeping in your lenses, anyone who doesn't have a good reason for extended wear, those are your firefighters, paramedics, shift workers, or people who always admit to falling asleep in their lenses, should be encouraged to wear their lenses during waking hours only. It's the healthiest option. The take home message is this, prescribe a lens that fits the patient's lifestyle and wearing habits. Take a look at the Vertice converted prescription and then pick a lens, any lens. My philosophy is that you should have three go-to options for each category, daily and monthly, in spheres, torics, and multifocals. Know the details and benefits and feel comfortable fitting one of each. Put a lens on the eye. In my experience, if you've done your due diligence with picking the right lens for the patient, 90% of the time, this will be your lens. Stick with it and you're ready to continue on with your lens evaluation and general examination. Let's take a look behind the slit lamp. You want to be on the lookout for anything that might cause trouble with your contact lens wear. Watch out for bad bleph and treat it if you find it, since that has the potential to cause serious complications. Look out for any redness and figure out why it's happening before putting a lens on a hot eye. Flip the lids and make sure that they don't have any raging papillae. You can save yourself a lot of grief by preemptively putting them on an allergy drop. Finally, look at that cornea. It can tell you a lot about the patient's previous lens wear habits. Neovascularization, scars, or infiltrates tell you that this patient may not have been compliant with their lens wear in the past. Not only will the patient think you're a wizard for knowing what they've done in the past just by shining a light on their eye, but you should take this history into account when picking your next lens. A quick rule of thumb is the 4, 6, 8, 10 rule. At 4 diopters, the change in prescription is about a quarter diopter. At 6 diopters, the change is about half a diopter. At 8 diopters, the change is about 3 quarters of a diopter. And at 10 diopters, the change is a full one diopter from the spectacle to the contact lens prescription. Remember, when compared to glasses, you'll need more plus power in the contact lenses and less minus power versus their spectacle counterparts. There are also tons of online calculators out there. I usually plug the prescription into one of them on my way to the contact lens room. Once you have your prescription, you'll need to place the lens on the eye. Tell the patient that you're putting the lens on and not in. Trust me, they'll be a lot less nervous that way. There are a hundred different combinations and permutations when it comes to placing the lens on the eye, but they all have some things in common. So let's go. First and foremost, wash your hands. Make sure you adjust the headrest so the patient can't go running away from you. Before inserting the lens, dry your hands really well so that the lens won't stick to your finger as much. Immobilize the lashes with your finger. I like to have the patient look up for this. Pull down the lower lid to give yourself plenty of room to maneuver. Have the patient look either directly ahead or, and this is especially if they're nervous, have them look up and away from where you're placing the lens. Place the lens either directly onto the cornea or onto the temporal sclera and roll your finger off. If you roll your finger, the lens is less likely to stick to it. Then ask the patient to look in the direction of the lens so that it shifts onto the cornea. There, you did it. Ta-da! The most important thing is to be in charge and be confident. There's nothing scary about having a lens placed on the eye, but there's also nothing scarier than having a lens placed on your eye by someone who's nervous. Give the lens a few minutes to equilibrate on the eye and then check vision. About five minutes is generally a good guide, and I like to take that time to talk to them about lens comfort, wear and care regimen, and solutions. Watch the patient as you talk with them. Once the lenses have settled, they'll generally have stopped dabbing, blinking, and rubbing their eyes. After that, you can check acuity and do a quick over-refraction. For spherical lenses, I generally do an out of ferropter spherical over-refraction. I always start with a plus 50 lens flipper or loose lens in front of the patient. It's the number one easiest way to tell if the patient's been accidentally over minused. I try not to give more minus unless the patient's acuity improves with it. If they have decreased acuity in a spherical over-refraction, then check the cylinder behind the ferropter. Before you can actually prescribe the lens to the patient, you need to assess it under the slit lamp to make sure it's a good fit. Look for good centration, full coverage of the cornea, and adequate movement. Evaluate the movement with your beam inferior nasal. A soft lens should move about a half to one millimeter. And one millimeter happens to be about the overlap of an average lens on an average cornea. So if the lens moves halfway up to the limbus, then your movement is half a millimeter. If you don't see adequate movement this way, then do a push-up test. 
Use the lid margin to push up the lens and assess whether or not it's a smooth and easy movement. Try not to avert the lower lid when you do this. It'll make it more difficult to push that lens up. If the lens does move and fall easily, you can be confident that it's not too tight and okay to dispense. If the patient has good vision and a properly fitted lens per your assessment, the last step is to evaluate patient comfort. If the patient's uncomfortable but the lens fits well, look for something stuck under the lens that might be causing irritation. Do a scleral wash by moving the lens onto the sclera and back to see if that fixes things. If this doesn't solve the problem, remove the lens and see whether or not it might have been inside out. If so, reinsert and make sure that comfort improves. If you're not successful with either of these techniques, then consider switching to a different lens. Now that you've made the appropriate recommendation for lens type and modality, have evaluated the fit, vision, and comfort in office, it's now time to dispense the lens to the patient. If the patient's a first time wearer, you'll need to review insertion and removal. This should be done in front of a mirror with a clean white towel or paper towel to catch the lens if they drop it. Before positioning the lens for insertion, make sure the lens is not inside out. You can do so by placing the lens on the tip of your finger and making sure the lens edges form a cup shape with the edges flared in versus a saucer with the edges flared out. Once you've determined that the lens is not inside out, dry your finger so that the lens doesn't stick to it. Place the lens on the tip of your right index finger. There are several techniques on how to teach a patient to actually insert their lens. My preferred method is to have the patient reach over their head with their left arm and hold their upper lashes. Use the middle finger of the right hand to pull down the lower lid and keeping both eyes open, bring the lens towards the eye and gently place it directly onto the eye. Release the lower lid first and gently look in all directions to ensure that the lens centers well on the cornea. Release the upper lid and blink. Empty the case of solution rinse and place it upside down to dry. After reviewing insertion, teach them how to remove the lens. To me, this is the most important part. Often I'll let them leave with the lenses to practice as long as they're able to safely take them off. First, make sure you've placed fresh solution in the case and washed your hands thoroughly. Make sure your hands are well dried. Now use the same technique as with insertion to hold your lashes and pull down on your lower lid. Look up and towards your nose and use your index finger to gently slide the lens onto the white part of the eye. Gently grasp the lens between your index finger and thumb in order to remove it. Clean the lens and place it into fresh solution. Before dispensing lenses to your patient, you're going to want to recommend a specific solution for lens care. If it's a new patient, I almost always start with a multi-purpose solution. There's a learning curve to insertion and removal to overall lens care, and I want them to have something that's easy to use. Furthermore, I always recommend a branded solution because you don't know what's in the generics. Hydrogen peroxide solutions are an excellent first choice for your patient, but they're also really good for troubleshooting since they're preservative free. It should be a no-brainer for anyone with solution sensitivity or allergies. It is great at removing heavy deposits and really improves end of the day comfort. Before I let any patient leave with any lens, I always give them a number to call in case of emergency. Contact lens emergencies can be summarized by RSVP, redness, secretions, vision loss, pain. Your patient should know to call or come to clinic right away if they experience any of them. The follow-up visit for a spherical lens should be short and sweet. Have the patient come back in wearing their lenses. Ask them about their comfort, vision, and wear experience. Check vision, over-refraction, fit, and corneal health, and last but not least, review care and cleaning. Remember, fitting spherical lenses is easy. Be confident, be educated on your options, and go for the gold.